you know, I think we all got pretty excited when the Warhammer 40k cards came to Magic Online, and I got so caught up in that hype, I forgot that something else came to Magic Online that we really need to test. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and this one is long overdue. Brett has been waiting for this league for a very long time, so thank you very much for your patience. Abdel Adrian, Gorian's Ward, is a card that was printed in, I think this is Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And it was one of those cards that just kind of slipped through the cracks and did not make it to Magic Online. And a while back, it came to Magic Online, but like was not particularly available. One of those treasure chest only release things. And I finally kind of looked at my recording queue and went, oh crap, like we need to record with this. So let's take a look at why exactly this card is exciting. And I'm going to hop directly into a match to show this off. All right, so I've artificially set up a scenario where we have successfully put Abdel Adrian into the graveyard, and now we are going to go ahead and cast an Animate Dead targeting Abdel Adrian. So Animate Dead enters play and attaches to Abdel Adrian. Abdel Adrian triggers, which allows us to exile a permanent. We're going to choose to exile Animate Dead. When Animate Dead leaves play, we sacrifice Abdel Adrian causing Abdel Adrian's thing to happen, meaning that we can now animate dead, targeting Abdel Adrian. And this is an infinite loop. Every time that we do this loop, we can continue to select any number of non-token permanents. So we will keep selecting animate dead, and we can make infinite creatures and then pass the turn. For those of you who have been around Legacy for a while, you will probably be familiar with World Gorger Dragon, which operated under similar principles to Abdel Adrian. The fundamental difference here is that if you have World Gorger Dragon and Animate Dead, that doesn't like do anything cool on its own, and you always needed something else to go with it, so it was an A plus B plus C in order to win the game or get close to it, whereas Abdel Adrian is just A plus B, Animate Dead plus Abdel Adrian. So let's take a look at what I originally was intending on playing and then how I've updated that, because this, uh, this list has been sitting for months and months and months in my queue. So this is what originally I had set aside to play, kind of a hybrid show-and-tell and reanimator deck, where Abdel Adrian was a reasonable part of that. In looking at the deck for the current metagame, I'm not like that big of a fan of Hapless Researcher, it's a small creature, it's not getting in for a lot of damage, we don't really have much of an aggro plan to supplement it. I think this is largely going to be worse than something like Careful Study. Uh, the cards are different, they do different things. A nice thing about Hapless Researcher is like you can play it and have it just sit around, and then when you draw a creature later, you can guaranteed put that creature in the bin. But, you know, we live in the Orcish Bowmaster world, and we probably have to respect that. And then kind of beyond that, blue-black decks in general in Legacy have really operated well under the, like, are they or aren't they actually reanimator this game axis, and we probably want to capitalize on that as well. So this is what I came up with as sort of an updated version of the deck list. Incorporating modern tech, I think we need some number of surveil lands. They work really well with uh, Brainstorm in particular, where you can go fetch, put surveil trigger on the stack, brainstorm your large creature to the top, and then it functions as an additional entomb. And I think we need the full playset of Troll. It's, it's, it's such a good package in Legacy right now, and I, I think we're already playing Grief and Reanimate. It's probably just a mistake to not max out on these. So effectively for our show and tells, we have five large creatures. Like maybe we'll put in a troll in a pinch, but the show and tell is something that we're expecting to do later in the game if the reanimator stuff does not work out. Rather than being plan A, we don't have ancient tombs or lotus petals to accelerate to the show and tell, for example. And then in the sideboard, we have a decent number of fair creatures. So like if we run into something like Mono Black Helm, where just like messing with the graveyard is just not going to do anything, 
we can board out the bulk of our reanimator package and play a reasonable deck. I am including one uh, silver bullet in Tomb Target in Sarah's Emissary for sort of fair creature decks, and we'll just kind of see how this ultimately ends up playing out. The core of this deck is strong, so I expect good results. And if you find you need some magic cards, consider checking out my sponsor, toamagic.com. That's Tales of Adventure. If you are going to SCGCon Atlanta, Command Fest LA, or Command Fest Dallas this month, you can place orders online and pick them up on site. And as someone who has done that before, uh, it feels really nice to not have to hunt through various vendors for the cards that you need. With that being said, let's battle. Uh, so we've got an almost hand here. I am debating whether or not keeping this and hoping that careful study works is better than just mulliganing to something that is more deterministic. Entomb, animate dead, any of the large creatures, including troll, cantrips are good hits. I think I'm just going to keep this. I could also keep this and just potentially surveil land on turn one and get a card deeper before I careful study, which I think think I like. I don't think I have to just jam animate dead immediately. And if I happen to surveil land into a decent sized creature, I just have double force of will backing up an animate dead. So let's surveil. Sewers. Well, I don't want to draw that, but the jig is up. Don't love that. I believe so that my opponent does not have time to cast a Bowmasters before I cast this spell that I am going to now careful study. Oh no. That's no cantrips, no large creatures, no fetch land to surveil further. That is quite unfortunate. All right. Uh, that's fine. We are going to be so far behind versus a control deck like beans if my opponent just like plays that trap and then plays up the beanstalk yeah am i willing to force of will that i don't think i do Ugh. <laughs> so the good news here is that i have many attempts to go off and i have protection for said attempts but the bad news is that like, I'm just letting my control opponent make land drops without pressuring their life total in any capacity. Uh, this is fine. So we will cycle, grab an underground C, and I'll go ahead and attempt an animate dead. I imagine that this resolves, and then my opponent will just attempt to remove it with swords to plowshares or whatever. Yeah, this is the incoming white mana. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so what is this? Like, up the beanstalk, Lorien revealed lands with Uro? This crop rotation represents something like a maze of Ith or a combo piece. I think I am just going to go ahead and say no to that. Yeah. They know again? Keep force of will? Let's do that. Or stack clears. <laughs> Submerge. Sure. Alright. So I'm going to swamp cycle at sorcery speed so that I can surveil the uh, main deck submerge deck. It's a little rough. I'm just going to put that on top. I think that's an above average draw. Yeah, if that was around last turn, our rotation could have... Okay, yeah, alright. I, I had the read on the situation. All right, that just represents Dark Depths. My grief is just not fast enough anymore, right? My opponent just like rotates, activates, 20s me in the next turn cycle. I can't draw both a large creature and a way to reanimate it in time unless I rip like Brainstorm and everything is just perfect. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, well, I'll take the submerge. It kind of seems like my opponent is trying to, like, build a meta slayer deck. Like, this seems like it is going to line up very well against, like, the blue-black tempo reanimator deck. 
That is not Brainstorm. Uh, I can see that I am dead. Brazen Borrower is fine. The fair stuff is fine here. The issue is just like that my opponent's main deck submerges are going to be rough. So like what, what part of the plan do I not want? Do I want to deviate from the graveyard? Do I want to be more aggro? Do I want to stay on combo? My opponent looks to be blue-green. I've got submerges to worry about. Burrow is a thing that Douthy Voidwalker is good against. Maybe I don't show and tell. Like, I cut some of these slots to play a few more fair creatures and interaction for my opponent's stuff. I could see this being reasonable. I think Abdel Adrian needs to get cut here. It is just like my worst creature against Merit Lage by a lot. All right, my blue count might be a little low for Force of Will. I should have double checked that. I can grief my opponent and ponder looking for a reanimation card. I think I'm just going to try to find something a little stronger. Uh, this qualifies as a little stronger. This is turn one, double grief into turn two, Douthy Voidwalker. I'm perfectly happy with that. Pitching Force of Will. Or fuck, it's not. Um, I lose Douthy Voidwalker in process. I'm still doing the grief thing. And then we'll count on Surveil Lands to do something meaningful. Uh, nice Veil of Summer, I guess. So I'll take Force of Will with the first one. Then I'll reanimate. I can take my opponent off of blue mana, or I can just take their tutor for Dark Depths, which I think is correct. All right. So we've got a little bit of time here. That Atraxa in hand is not particularly good. There's a reason why the blue-black Riscaminator deck plays such a small, um, like, Entomb package. Let's Surveil. Ponder is probably an above-average draw. We'll happily keep that. We'll send in for some points of damage. Honestly, we'd really just like to find a... A rainstorm or maybe a Douthy Voidwalker. Hey, love that. This does require a fetch to play, but we're super happy to just have six points of power in play. Nope. My opponent doesn't have too much going on, which is the good news. Bad news is that I'm not currently on track to just race. Uh, a 2020. Ugh. Yeah, that's rough. That's just time walk. And my opponent's got Veil of Summer for when it comes back down. Alright. Yikes. We're just playing Drago, but I think this Drago, like, heavily, heavily favors my opponent. Like, I'm just a crop rotation away from death at any moment. Uh, sure. Yeah, more Drago. Uh, Brainstorm is insane. But this will be one of just the worst Brainstorm locks of all time, if we do get Brainstorm locked. I don't have show and tells in, but let's plan on putting in large creature, large creature, and then shuffling with this ponder. Yikes. Yeah, that's an absolutely terrible Brainstorm lock. All right. I hope my opponent just cycles their Veil of Summer end of turn. That did not happen. More draw go. Uh, we're just griefing. My opponent's got a veil. They can draw their card. Like, my my whole plan here is just to hit my opponent with griefs over the course of three turns. Submerge. I will just keep casting griefs. The fact that those are denying me future draw steps is particularly annoying here. Ugh. All right, so that's a problem. That represents Dark Depths. I already know what I'm drawing. Or no, I knew what I was drawing with this one. We'll just grief again. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. Sure. So my opponent just gets Dark Depths and copies, and I am dead on the next turn. My Animate Dead does not save me from that. Yep. 
But like, I'm going to attack my opponent down to three, and then they're going to make a 20-20. And I have nothing that I can do about it, and they have to try because they're just dead next turn. My animate dead doesn't save me in any capacity. Yeah. Dead. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by topdeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. Okay, I don't quite like this hand. Show and tell isn't particularly good with Abdel Adrian. I don't have a reanimate for troll. I have no cantrips to fix this hand. Um, with this one, we've got animate dead and Abdel Adrian. No way to get him into the graveyard. Nothing to put in with show and tell. This also doesn't work. Um, on five, I am keeping this. And this is just, you know, end of turn troll cycle into animate dead and then hope to do something from there. It really seems like the show and tell package is getting in the way of this deck doing its thing. By running a show and tell package, I'm incentivized to play more creatures, which is just clunking up my hands. And Abdel Adrian doesn't really work with the show and tell plan at all. Uh huh. I don't like this. Whatever is about to happen is going to kill me. Yeah, this is just burning wish for a bunch of goblins. Yep. So what, this is 10 goblins? Does Atraxa save me? So I ponder, I find in two. Take 10, go to 9. Or sorry. Take 10, go to 10, fetch to 9. Put Atraxa in play, block one goblin. Oh, there's the reanimate life loss. I can't animate dead, so no, that is not going to save me. We got got... Null Rod, Force of Negation, Sarah's Emissary, not bad. Douthy Voidwalker, potentially playable. Abdel Adrian is good against Empty the Warrens and kind of bad against most of the rest of the stuff. I don't know. Maybe Show and Tell comes out. Force of Negations, this comes in. Go down like an Archon. I don't have to go down an Archon. I could go down some and play Delthy Voidwalkers. The graveyard is technically a resource. It's not used super commonly. I think I actually just want a couple more blue cards for my Force of Wills and Force of Negations. Uh, this is totally unexciting and not my preferred power level for like what my deck should be doing because we are just like a worse grief reanimate deck than the blue black riskaminator by quite a lot uh we'll be taking galvanic relay and song of creation here second verse same as the first this leaves my opponent with a brainstorm that's pretty good but that brainstorm probably doesn't just get fired off on turn one they probably wait <laughs> Ugh. yeah so i effectively have a zero card hand right now or sure. I imagine this is a surveil land. They junk Mox Opal. They are not looking for more mana right now. They they need business spells, you know. They probably need like a galvanic relay to bridge to something stronger. All right. I'm going to treat these as unknowns now. Oh, that's such a good brainstorm. Uh, unless I get brainstorm locked because I can't immediately ponder afterwards. I have basic swamp. Oh, uh, that's awkward. I do think I need to fire it off. Like, my hand is absolute doo-doo right now. Entomb is very good. Put back one Entomb and one Reanimate. Keep blue card in hand for Force of Negation. And we'll pass the turn. Oh, there's another one. Good value. Um, do I just say no to that? I think I am just going to say no to that. I'm not 100% sure what it's getting, but I know that I don't like it. I think I just want Atraxa to find follow-up interaction here. So let's bash in with Grief. Hit my opponent to 9. I'll reanimate the Atraxa. 
Null rod's good. So artifact, the rest doesn't really matter. Instant, sorcery, creature, land. I think slamming null rod here is better than cantripping for additional interaction. Note that I can just die to a handful of rituals specifically into tendrils. Cool. It seems like I might just want Delthy Voidwalkers. I don't know. Like, I'd be looking at cutting this and these for Delthys. I think I'm just going to submit. I think I'm going to keep my blue count higher and not trim these. So I have a Force of Will. I can pitch a Traxa and have a decent amount of other interaction um, off my cantrips. I'm not thrilled about this. I am going to keep this, however. And we'll see how scary this gets. Just suspending Gaia's will. You got it. I think this is ponder to come up with the plan. So careful study is not bad. That gets a large creature into the graveyard. But I don't know that I want all of these cards. I think I'm just going to shuffle. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's see if we can poke a hole over there. I will take Galvanic Relay. We got some we got some zones that we care about here. Okay, so that's my opponent's draw. We still know their full hand. They like the card that's on top. I don't love that for me. Um yeah. Oh, these cards suck. Sarah's emissary goes back. I think it's better to keep this in hand as a blue card for force of will than to just keep additional lands. Let's put back this. Play a fetch land and pass. Gaia's will is ticking down. My opponent drew a card that they like. Yeah, you can ponder. My opponent is conceptually looking for something that can force this through so that they can galvanic relay. I'll do a little surveilling. Reanimation spell for grief is acceptable. Land is not. Ugh. All right. No. My reanimation spells that I top deck do get better. Next turn is a scary turn. So, do I ponder and try to do something broken, or do I just keep double force of will so that I can better play around something like Veil of Summer? I think I'm going to try to do something broken. Yes. Uh, one, two, three. No shuffle. Land drop. Reanimate Atraxa. Now I know that I get a force of negation here. Animate dead on grief does things. So instant. Oh, I hate this interface. Take instant. Land. Enchantment. Reacher. Done. Fetch. Underground sea. Animate dead targeting grief. One, two, three, four, five. If I fight here, I can't fight twice on my opponent's turn. And I think I want to fight twice on my opponent's turn, so you can have this. Three, six, seven, eight, I'll discard a Misty. Uh, that's fine. My opponent's hand is presumably much, much better now. Burning Wish goes to Graveyard. So we are going to specifically Force of Negation Gaia's Will so that it does not go to Graveyard. Junk my Atraxa for that. Yes, um, this is fine. Uh, that's still fine. Are you cracking the LED in response? You are, in which case I will just force of will that. And we win the match. Definitely felt clunky on my end, though. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Uh, this objectively looks like a very powerful hand. I'm going to have a little bit of flexibility in how I choose. Never mind. <laughs> flexibility gone. Yeah, the reanimate was just like very easily the best card in my hand. 
Am I just griefing right back? Drawing this is weird. Like this is a thing. I think I'm not gonna grief this turn. Like the various cards in my hand all have uses, yeah. And one of the things that I don't want to do is expose myself to wasteland if possible. So I can fetch a basic island here. Swamp cycle for basic swamp here. So next turn I have show and tell for Archon of Cruelty, and I can do that two turns in a row. That means that I probably don't care about my Entomb anymore. So the next question is, do I grief this turn or do I grief right before I show and tell? If I grief this turn, I can stop reanimate on troll. I don't think I care about reanimate on troll because I'm trying to just show and tell and kill that anyway. I don't care about something like Bowmaster's end of turn. Yeah, that's fine. I guess I don't have show and tell two turns in a row if I don't have a third basic. Uh, sure. Like that, that costs my opponent two cards. They can take my Archon out of my hand and my show and tell is worse. Uh, but this is all still fine. I have no need to entomb. Show and tell, Avdel, Adrian, not exactly good. I think I'm just passing. Now, this is sort of unfortunate where, like, with the way this deck is built, you can have a whole bunch of combo pieces and they don't actually accomplish anything. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, that's unfortunate. I'll discard one of the show and tells here. And I'm looking to draw like an animate dead or something. Brainstorm's perfectly fine. Um, Abdel Adrian, not good with reanimate. So I guess I'm entombing and reanimating my other Archon. Back Abdel Adrian. Careful study, probably. Yep. Let's fetch. Underground Sea. I don't have the extra black card to grief, unfortunately. So Archon doesn't enter untapped, so I don't really have to play it right now. Uh, reanimate Archon. Yeah, that is the cost of a Dark Slick Shores in a flex slot. I take nine. Lose Grief. I can't put in another Archon. I don't have another dead. That just lined up just so unfortunately all game. So the reanimation stuff is absolutely a liability. If I can, I would like to get rid of all of my reanimator stuff or a large portion of it. At least, like, my opponent is just going to be the better fair deck he is, I think, the primary problem here. Because they are built to be a fair deck with a small reanimation package, and I am meant to be this, like, show-and-tell reanimator deck with a small fair package. Maybe that means that I can't pivot out. Yeah, maybe I can't pivot out. Maybe I have to stay in, like, fully in combo. Can get a couple extra counter spells for their reanimates. And I think I'm gonna very, very, very reluctantly stay on combo. A show and tell and a reanimate. Those cards don't work together. I have a show and tell and an Atraxa and the lands to get there. This is fine. I'm gonna get rid of Force of Negation here. I am fully just looking for lands with Ponder. Well, okay. I'll, I'll take that stuff. I am not exactly sure, like, what is bait versus what is something that I care about. We'll see if I just basically lose the game on, to the, this, on the spot for my opponent reanimating my Atraxa. All right, I didn't lose it immediately. Sure. So we can rule out my opponent having reanimate, probably. If I put this in the other order and I entomb this turn, I can animate dead on my next turn. But I was keeping animate dead in case my opponent, like, griefed me so that I could animate dead their creature. Um, now do I want to animate dead grief or just end of turn entomb? I think I want to end of turn entomb for sure. We'll see if we get the upkeep troll cycle here. No, they are redrawing those cards. One has green. So, end of turn, we'll do this thing. I think I want an Archon in there. I don't think I want to put an Atraxa in there and have Surgical Extraction be better than it already would be against me. I think I'll play Reanimate. That plays around days. Alright, we got a Force of Will out of hand. 
No end of turn Bowmasters is nice. Yeah. So now I need to get rid of Animate Dead and spike a land for show and tell and have my opponent not daze it. Oh, actually, uh, well, this works. I guess I could have just discarded my Atraxa and Animate Deaded Atraxa, and then that plays around days and doesn't require me to spike the additional land. Um, I think that was sloppy on my end. And I am punished for it. Rough. So I think I am effectively dead here. Uh, yeah, no, that's real bad. Now getting an Archon into play doesn't cause my opponent to lose this. Um, yeah, I potentially punted that one. Like, my opponent still has four more cards, so it's possible they have other interaction than just the days, but I, I had a better line available to me. Okay, so... I maybe have turn three show and tell Archon. Maybe. I feel awkward about this hand. Like, I'm just kind of almost at everything, but I don't actually have anything meaningful. That gets me to turn three show and tell. Uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna put that on top. Because that is just grief, pitch, Archon, into Entomb, and reanimate next turn. And I do that with Force of Will back up. What you got going on over there? So I will take Force of Will. I'll take Leyline Binding, actually. Like, I take Leyline Binding, I force the Force of Will to get rid of Force and one of these other cards at the same time. Yeah. So in Tomb, get Lorien revealed. I force back, junking the show and tell. Pick a Traxa and reanimate. And this refuels my hand. And my opponent is not going to play through it. So it looks like we've got rhinos on the other side of the board here. And also, uh, what is it? Scion of Draco. Do I want to go fair stuff? Stealthy Voidwalkers can be okay versus something like Murktide Regent that could reasonably be in the deck. I think I like Sarah's Emissary as a way to just stop creature-based damage. My opponent can do like some Brazen Borrower type stuff that could... Oh, maybe they can't actually. Uh. Yeah, this seems sweet. All right, this is the stuff that I'm thinking about. I think I'm going to diversify these. I think I'll keep show and tell. I don't know that I'm going to go much deeper. I think this is more about me doing my thing than it is about stopping my opponent doing their thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Tapped land. You love to see it. Grief, pitch, grief, reanimate, grief, troll cycle, reanimate, troll. Seems good. Fairy. Yeah, so I'm going to take your fairy. I'm going to now reanimate my grief. I think I just take your second... Do I take your second land drop, or do I just take the hearse? Maybe I just take the hearse so that I can always troll reanimate rather than trying to high roll. Yeah, I think I like that. So there's the cycle for the next land drop. So that's most of the land types over there. Animate dead as well. Sure. When it's at 17, troll cycle... Underground Sea, Land Drop, Reanimate Troll. That is the third natural land drop into Rhinos. Oh, into Unlicensed Hearse. Uh, sure. Uh, this is all fine. I have the faster clock by a lot. Spend it. I'd kind of just like to find something like a counter spell to just seal the deal here. No. All right. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, it is possible that I will just get out aggroed out by rhinos because my animate deads and entombs and stuff aren't actually doing anything meaningful right now. Ooh, but eight. My opponent is passing. I don't think there is benefit to me casting an entomb here. This feels like it's going to be like a violent outburst or something like that. Oh, sure, you want to tap that down? I accept. Yeah, so I have five cards in hand and none of them do anything, unfortunately. All right, my opponent is at five. Yep. A spirit guide for Shardless Agent. 
Another hearse. That's fine. I'm so glad these aren't rhinos that are killing me. My opponent intentionally left this mana up. I don't feel like we deserve this win. <laughs> I felt like what I was doing was terrible. And my opponent just was cascading into unlicensed hearses instead of things that killed me. So we won. Ooh, so my Undercity Sewers means that I can't reanimate on turn one. I think the hand is still a keep despite that. Let's grief and pitch one of the animate deads and just try to make sure that our opponent doesn't uh, get us in the first turn cycle with some combo deck or something. What are you doing with your life? The London Mulligan is so fucking powerful. And you kept a hand with four soul lands and no ability to cast any spells. I will take your colored mana source. Good day. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't really want to ponder right now. The London Mulligan is so good. Please, 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 please use it. Um, let's just put a troll into play. Grab underground C, do this, reanimate troll. Um, I don't think I grief my opponent yet. I just don't care about their cards quite yet. Like solitude is literally the only thing that I care about right now. Nice. Six. Opponent's at 14. I think I'm just going to do this. I don't think I need to grief if I have force of will. Yeah. Okay. I like Sarah's Emissary. Dismember, Fatal Push, Force of Negation are reasonable. I can consider Merktide Regent and Brazen Borrower as well. So some portion of the time my opponent is Leyline-ing. Sometimes they are unlicensed Hearse-ing. Regardless, there's going to be Hate Bears that I'm going to have to deal with. I'm going to get rid of careful studies. Some portion of the time I'm just going to reanimate my opponent's initiative creature or whatever, and that's how I'll win the game. I think it's correct to board out Abdel Adrian, but it's match five and I haven't pulled off the thing yet, so I'm going to leave it in the deck. I have six show-and-tell targets. Show-and-tell doesn't care about Chalice. I care about Blood Moon to some extent in the first turn cycle or so. Like Dismember. I think I'm not going to Force of Negation. I don't know, maybe I need to force a negation. I probably need one of these two. I, I, I think I just need a little agency versus lock pieces that aren't attached to creatures. I don't really see how I get extra cards in here without cutting the Abdel Adrians that I'm trying to show off. Uh, this hand is very good at not losing, but this hand is very bad at actually trying to win. I think I'll just mulligan. I am unmoved by this hand, but I do not believe that it is a mulligan. I'm going to get rid of an Archon. Archon doesn't pitch to Force of Will. Uh, sure. Mox Diamond is a bit unusual. Not saying bad, just unusual. Containment Priest? I'm Force of Willing that. I think I'm going to keep an Atraxa in hand for the purposes of show and tell just winning me this game. I'm not 100% convinced that that is correct wall let's ponder uh that's real good all right we have a clear plan and now we'll just see if my opponent is capable of doing something more powerful than what i've got going on they've gone down a very large number of cards all right uh show and tell is like very much the obvious name here in my opinion but i don't did I show my opponent show and tells in game one? They could just name a generic cantrip here. Uh, my opponent did not name show and tell, uh, so I probably effectively win the game next turn unless they have a follow-up disruptive card, um, something that blows up one of my lands, another containment priest. That is unfortunate. I guess I could have buried the show and tell two down to play around my opponent not knowing to name show and tell with anointed peacekeeper. Uh, that was not a line that was on my radar. Okay. I can still just like draw an animate to dead 
and this is fine. Uh, still fine. Er, this puts me to ten. Er, in tomb, there is emissary. If I draw animate dead, I win. I don't. This costs two more to cast. This is eight damage. So I am still technically live. No fable looting. Uh, that is the exact seas I will concede. I lined up a little unfortunately. Again, if I cut a card, it's the Abdel Adrian. I'm going to keep that to see if we can do the thing once. Like, I could play some brazen borrowers for a containment priest, I guess. Uh, this is a keep. This is just grief, pitch, attracts, uh, reanimate, grief, probably. Have dismember for a containment priest or whatever. Yeah. My opponent's on five as well. I'm always taking swords. I am thinking about whether or not I just want to reanimate troll on turn two rather than grief on turn one. I think I want to reanimate grief on turn one. So yeah, yeah. Take their chrome box and just try to have another non-game where my opponent does not get to cast spells. Uh, sure. This is not a problem as long as I draw any land. I don't need to grief immediately. Uh, this is fine. We'll do a little effectively draw go. Uh, that's good. I think this means that I don't need to grief and just give up cards yet. Another turn cycle down the line. If my opponent makes a land drop, like we can start thinking about griefing. But like generally speaking, my cards are just so good right now. Uh, I don't think I need to do that. Just pass the turn. All right, there is the third land. We'll force of will whatever my opponent plays, and then I'll probably grief another. Yeah. I think I am into getting both basics and not getting got by something like a blood moon. I'm always attacking for three. I was at eight. I think I am fine griefing and giving up dismember. Uh, those are two very good cards. My opponent plays fourth Aerlingas and introduces the monarch to the game. I think that's more awkward than Fable. Fable loots for answers to grief. But I don't have all that much removal, so I don't think I want to continuously play the monarch game. Um, yeah, this is fine. I'm definitely falling behind, though. I need to close this game out in the next few turns. I have absolutely incredible top decks. Like, any animation spell is just insane. Any cantrip is insane. Show and tell is not insane. Hit for three. Opponent's at five. So now I can add my creatures to the list of things that are just very, very, very good to draw. So it's basically non-land cards at this point. Uh, broadside, very good for my opponent. That takes my grief off the board, and my opponent hits me for four per turn cycle. I'm at nine, and I lose grief. My deck is absolutely failing me. That is so much garbage on top. I think I'm dead. Like, I probably get hit for four. Oh, did you draw like a fourth air lingos on top of that? Okay. I am fully dead. We put up a 2-3 finish in this league. How do we feel about this one at the end of the day? Uh, sorry, Brett, but I think this was not good. <laughs> I, I think all of the power that was in this deck list was in Grief Troll Reanimate. I am not sure if we show and tell the entire time. Maybe we show and tell like once. Like this was just not lining up well. A lot of times show and tell decks will be like a 12 cantrip based deck because you'll be running things like Preordain to help you assemble show and tell plus your creature. Um, Abdel Adrian, generally speaking, works poorly with show and tell. Maybe you can build this so that there's more Abdel blink targets, you know, like you put Orcish Bowmasters into the deck and then like you show and tell in Abdel Adrian, Abdel Adrian. No, if you just blink Bowmasters without the animate dead, that doesn't go infinite. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think this idea was a, a bust. 
you know, Ab Abdel Adrian, you know, is a card that looks very exciting with Animate Dead, but I think even if you play something like Necromancy, so you have a fifth Animate Dead effect that Abdel Adrian can go infinite with, that this is just not better than doing the Atraxa and Archon type stuff that just ends the game. And I think a lot of times, even if I was given the opportunity to Abdel Adrian make infinite tokens and pass the turn, I would probably just Atraxa anyway to attempt to find Force of Will or Grief to just further protect the thing that I have done. So I think this general strategy gets a thumbs down for me, from me. Um, maybe you can clean up the deck building a little bit, but at the end of the day, if I ask, like, why are we doing this instead of playing Blue Black Riscaminator, I, I can't give you a good answer to that question. I feel like we were just playing an objectively worse version of that deck list. Um, if I was going to play it again, the Dark Slick Shores cost me the ability to play around days one time. I wanted another untapped land. I didn't necessarily just want to add another fetch or another shock, like I am a reanimate deck, so my life total is irrelevant. Uh, maybe I should have just played a second island so that I have ability to do three basic lands to get to show and tell without being wastelanded that's something that could have been relevant yeah I, I think that's all i've got to to say on this one this one was a failed experiment unfortunately and a lot of times when you try to you know try a one of in a league you are not going to run into that card and that's kind of what happened today so brad i made you wait for so long and then your card didn't show up in the league you know say la vie so it goes Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day, and if you want to try to do better with Abdel Adrian than I did today, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!